Awesome. Okay. So we are officially starting. This is our very first. So here's Richard. Hi. You have opportune timing. I did. Yeah. Can I? Hi, Rich. <laughs> it's Kelly. She's on the. Hey, is that Kelly? It is. Okay. Can I? Can I do? Love this? ya. Okay. Okay. He literally waited, waited till I press record. Guarantee. Oh, hi. I, I just got home. <laughs> okay. All right. Now everyone who's recording, that's my life. Okay. Anyway. Um, so we're going to be talking about mindset. And I think in this month, what Chris and I are going to do is we are going to, we're not even going to get into the nitty gritty yet. Why? Because I think mindset is such a broad topic that it really needs to be broken down. Um, so we are going to cover the bare bones basics, the absolute foundations in the month of January. Then once um, sorry, if I seem distracted, it's because I'm trying to watch out for waiting room. Um, then once February kicks off, we're really going to start diving into the nitty gritty of, of putting in some things that, um, will just really help us give us the skills and interventions that we need to, uh, bolster our mindset and have a success driven mindset. But today we are literally just going to be talking about what it is and why it's important. Um, so I'll actually hand it off to Krista. If you want to kind of talk about the first couple points, you can definitely go ahead and also maybe even, I think, just talk about why you volunteered to want to host this one with me. Because I think mindset for you is very, very, very important. Because whenever I say something, you're always in the background, like, with your praise hand emojis, like, yes. <laughs> so uh, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and kind of take it away for a little bit. Okay, so the first couple points, um, like she said, we really want to just touch on like what is mindset and how it affects everything we do um, and how we get our mindsets because it can be affected by a lot of different things, but we don't need to focus on those things. We need to almost trick ourselves into thinking a different way. So um, my, what is mindset? Um, it's the ability to remain aware of what's going on. Um, being aware and utilizing strategies to shift the course of what we are thinking. Um, when you hit an obstacle, which, which way are you going to go? You hit, you have a tragedy, you have something devastating happen, even if it's just something small. Which path are you going to take? Are you going to take this one where you completely fall apart? Or are you going to take this one where you rise above it? Um, it helps you. I just fell off my chair and I just, and I just fell my nose. Okay, she fell off her chair and bumped her nose. So she's going to rise above it and she's going to go play now. So it controls how you act and how you think. Um, no matter what happens, you have to take control of that. She fell off the couch. Is she going to cry about it or is she going to pick up and go? She's going to pick up and go. And that's what we got to do. Um, it's the driving force behind our behavior, whether that be conscious behavior or subconscious behavior. Sometimes we experience things. And consciously, we may be thinking about which path to take, but subconsciously, we're going another way. So we really have to um, pay attention to what we think versus what we actually do, because sometimes they're two totally different things. Uh, mastering your mindset, we put, is vital because it helps you master the only thing you can control yourself. You can't control the situations. You can't control the bad things that happen. You can't control how it's going to go from that point forward even sometimes because just because you have the best laid out plan that's not always how it goes so controlling the way you think about what's happening is really the key to the whole thing you want to keep going there we go yeah sorry i was forgot i was muted i almost said something and then i remembered um so yeah i mean i think it's really important for us to clarify what, what mindset is and why it's so important, just because I think there's a lot of misunderstandings about what it is and a lot of also um, misunderstandings of how important it is. So mindset isn't just like all this like mystical for through like stuff where you're just like, I'm going to put it out into the universe that this awesome stuff's going to happen. And I'm just going to totally believe that it's just going to come true for me. That is not what it is. And when sometimes people talk about mindset to me, um, it, it definitely, that that's a very common misunderstanding. And before, you know, I was trained in mindset and things like that. I, I kind of had that feeling too, you know, like the book, the secret, whatever, but you know, before you really dive in and stuff, you're like, oh, this feels a little like, like woo woo stuff, right? Like you're like, mm. but I can't 
harp on this enough, how important it is for literally everything you do, business, especially relationships, your personal life, fitness goals, literally any goal. Like it is like, when we talk about it, it is at its very core, um, the driving force behind the way you think, the way you interpret outside information, and then the way you subsequently behave. So mindset is another thing. And, um, definitely want to pull this up. I'm going to try to screen share. Um, so you guys can see right here. Okay. So these are all the things and kudos to Krista for finding this. Um, these are all the things that contribute and are a product of your mindset. Okay. Um, habits of the mind. What are you doing? What are you thinking? What thoughts are you giving life to? Okay. And you are a lot of the times, unless you are aware, like we talked about it, unless you are aware of your mindset, you don't know the habits of the mind you're creating. You don't know that the thoughts you are having, you are choosing to have because you have created those habits of the mind. You have created the pathway for those thoughts to exist over and over and over again. You have basically given them permission to live in your brain, okay? Those habits of the mind. And, and also default thoughts. When something happens, is your default thought to be, they did that on purpose. Your default thought is, they don't like me. Your default thought is something, right? Whatever. We all have default thoughts because again, habits of the mind and that precipitates our mindset and how we look at things, how we look at situations. Okay. Um, created by experiences, experiences that you're having now as an adult that you had as an adolescent that you had as a child. Okay. We all know the whole nature versus nurture. We all know, you know, that a lot of what you went through as a child basically shapes the way that you think, feel about the world. Okay. Uh, it can create blind spots. What's that mean? Creating blind spots means things that you cannot see because those, again, those habits of the mind kind of create blinders like this about what you do and do not see and how you interpret the world. So it essentially gives you tunnel vision and you are unable to see other facts and truths about the situation that make it different than what you perceive it to be. Okay. Um, and again, because that's how it's in the mind say, oh, they do it because they don't like me. When that happens, poof, you put your blinders on, it creates blind spots of all the other things and all the other facts that you are not taking into account and that are very much influencing your mindset moving forward again, because it's those habits of the mind. They're self-deceptive habits in the mind. You can give yourself distorted thoughts, things that absolutely are not true. Oh, they're doing this because they don't like me. That's probably not true. Oh, I'm, it's because it's I'm ugly. It's because I'm not smart. It's because I'm not good enough. It's because this, it's whatever, right? I'm a victim. This happened to me. I can't change anything, blah, 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 whatever, right? We all have these thoughts. They're self, they're deceptive. They are not true. None of those things are true. But because of the way that you have that habit of the mind by the created experiences that you have gone through, okay, the blind spots that you have that you can't take in other peripheral facts, it makes it self-deceptive. It makes it, it they're a lie, essentially. Uh, Krista, do you want to go over the other four? Sorry. Ape our laws was next, right? Yes. Okay, so um, how our mindsets shape our everyday lives, um, our thoughts, our words, um, they kind of all go together to shape how um, the way it described was like a lake. They all kind of ripple together and shape the way we think and the way we do. Um, if there's something you want to change about your life, you have to kind of be creative um, and improve your well-being and be able to shape your mindset and shift it a different way. So just like I said earlier, just because you think a certain way, your words maybe reflect something totally different. Um, let's say just like her falling off the couch for example um had she just laid in there crying I could think oh my goodness the worst absolute thing has happened reality she could just be laying in there and absolutely nothing is wrong that's just how the way we perceive things you have to be really cautious about 
like I said, what you think, what you speak, and then what you do. Make sure they all kind of flow together so you don't just have all these different waves that conflict each other. There's going to be a lot of confusion, and when there's confusion, nothing gets done. Next was ooh, shaping our world. Um, they Mindsets are, when there's change, you... I don't know, for me, a lot of times when change happens, I'm okay with change, um, but there's a lot of people who are not okay with change. And when you, how do I wanna say this? You have to be able to shift. When, when there's a change, you have to change. Um, you can't always move the same way. You can't always do the same things because everything is always changing. And if you cannot evolve with that, you can't evolve with what's happening, then you're gonna stay stuck. Um, and we say that a lot. If you're in a stuck position, get out of that position. Don't stay stuck because it is gonna shape your whole entire world. It's gonna shape your whole entire future, essentially. Um, you have to be able to shift from what's happening and take everything that is happening and move your mindset forward. Next is mindsets can be developed. What, baby? Come here. Hold on just a second. You're fine. I can kind of take over for a sec. So mindsets can be developed in that once you have something, it's not fixed. It's not absolute. It can be, you can work on it. The one beautiful thing about your brain is it's elastic. It's like clay. Just because something happened to you however many years ago and it has you know, again, it's created by our experiences because it has formulated how you have thus far thought about your life and relationships and people and intentions and all of that. You can develop something different. You can change it. You can shift it. I have a post coming out later and I almost like you guys, I guess we get a taste of it, but it's five myths that in my industry, so like clinical intervention and, you know, uh, psychology and all that stuff, like five misconceptions about that industry or five myths that they tell you or that they make you believe is true is that, you know, that you can't change it. And all you can do is just, you know, work around it and whatever. And that's not true. You can literally change and shift and develop any part of your brain that you want to. You can completely eradicate specific behaviors by, tr by practicing new ones. You can disallow certain thoughts and fears and anxieties um, to exist anymore and develop new patterns. So they can be developed. You can't be like, oh, I've got a crap mindset. So I guess that's just what I'm stuck with, right? And that you're constantly feeling like you're having to battle your crap mindset. That's not the case. If you're constantly feeling like you're having to battle it, then what you need to do is instead of compensating, you need to change it. You need to develop other habits of the mind, create new experiences, eliminate those blind spots, understand that your previous thoughts are self-deceptive. Um, going back about shaping our lives. Another thing too, is your mindset again, controls your thoughts, which controls your actions and your behavior. So how does that shape your life? It, it shapes how people treat you, how people view you because of what you've done or your reactions or what they've cost other people or yourself. And it can sometimes shape your life in the sense where it's limited certain jobs, or maybe you get fired a lot, or maybe you struggle with relationships. Um, you know, whatever the case might be, when it shapes your world, how do you think about the world? Do you think about the world as a place that's out to get you, that's not trustworthy, that you can't depend on, that you don't belong in? If you have a crap mindset up until that point, then that's the view of your world. Your mindset shapes the way you see the world. So someone can see the world as beautiful and positive and, and filled with butterflies and rainbows. And someone else can think that every day when they wake up, you know, they're just under attack all the time. Why? Mindset. And again, that can be developed. You can develop a new mindset. Now let uh, Krista finish off on the, on the, the next one, which can be transcended. Miss Green has to look at all her notes that she took. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got it on my phone on here and print it off. <laughs> Leave me alone. So mindsets can be transcended. Um, using the power of mindfulness, we can transcend our blind spots and self-deceptive forces, examine how our habits of mind manifest to create our lives and our world. Um, we can tap into our collective capacities for profound personal and societal transformation. 
Okay, I'm interested too. Um, it can be said that there's no way to avoid the far reaching effects of our mindsets. Um, their hidden web of influence permeates everything all the time. What's inside us, the way we believe, our attitudes, our assumptions. Um, it manifests outside, shaping our future possibilities on both an individual and collective level. Just like she said, um, how how we do things, um, how we manifest our lives. Like she said earlier, it's not this magical thing. And we talk about manifesting all the time. We can't just um, be in a bad situation and manifest, you know, a million dollars or a, a lake house or some dream, some crazy dream without doing something about it. You can't um, stay in a situation and a job in a relationship, anything and say you're going to do better and never do anything to change it or without kind of refocusing your life. Maybe you can't get out of that situation right now. Maybe you can't change something right then. But if you don't refocus the way you're thinking, um, it's never going to change. There's nothing ever going to be different about it. Yep. And I think that's the most important thing to understand is since we're talking about how important it is, how you are treating your business right now, how you are treating maybe the people in your business, whether it's your customers, your uplines, your downlines, your sidelines, just the business in general, you know, what it means for you, um, how you're treating your goals, how you're treating your, your IPA, literally everything has to do with your mindset. If you are approaching it from a lazy standpoint of, well, I just can't find time to post, or I just don't know what to do, or I, I you know, whatever, that's a mindset thing. Because uh, a person who is driven and determined and disciplined will figure out a way. Whereas the person who might have the kind of mindset where it's like, they feel um, insignificant, or they, they just don't feel as worthy or whatever, they don't feel like they are equipped and knowledgeable and worthy enough to go look for the answers. They need to be provided by the answers by somebody they believe is worthy because they don't believe they are or someone they believe is more knowledgeable, not them. And so that's usually like when I'm talking to people and it happened today when I was talking to um, one of our, uh, just a promoter, a, well, I use that term loosely, but anyway, um, someone who like wanted to be a promoter. Um, Anyway, I think in the Thrive Army Leader chat, I showed you guys and was just like, what are your thoughts? Um, and a lot of it was mindset. Now, was she asking for the skills? Yes. However, based on some of the things that she was saying, it was clear that skills, the skills weren't the issue. The mindset was. And it's also really hard to show somebody that that's what the issue is, Right. So this person was like, I've, I just don't know what to do. I don't know what to post. I've tried it, but here's the thing. Here are some cues. She was like, and I just feel like a loser. I feel like I'm not good enough. I'm so, I don't even know what to do. I'm so lost. Like there's like all these clues. Right. Um, and I'm like, that's a mindset problem. That is a mindset problem. And that's what we need to work on and fix. And then when I asked them about this, they got so offended because again, when you're not self-aware, you don't know it's a mindset problem, right? Because most people who have that crappy mindset that when I say crappy, I don't mean like you're the problem. What I mean is like the mindset itself is crap. It's not benefiting you. They tend to always view themselves as the victim, things that are happening to them. And so that's why they get very defensive when you point out, hey, a lot of it starts in, in your brain. A lot of it starts with the way that you think, the things that you tell yourself, um, the things that you validate in your, in your brain that you give life. Um, and innately when that, when they're defensive about it or denying or denying it again, it's not that they're a horrible person. It's just because again, those habits of mind. So sometimes I want you to think to yourself, like if I'm stuck in my business, if I don't know where to go, if I feel like I'm floundering, if I need, um, like loads and loads of direction from, the team or my uplines, like you can't make movement unless someone tells you where to go. Again, that's a mindset thing. So literally that's why we're talking about it right now of just what is mindset and why it's important. That is why. And also as an entrepreneur, mindset is key because again, that is the driving force. It is the only thing you can control. 
You cannot control making sales. You cannot control recruiting people. You cannot control if people decide to quit your business and leave. You cannot decide or you cannot control if a customer stops their auto ship or decides to bash you online because they're like five socks and whatever, right? You can't control those things. You can only control your mindset. And I tell you this, when you can control it and when you start to gain so much more self-awareness about who you are, what you have to offer the world, and you truly start to believe and buy into the fact that you can change your mindset, then you believe you can change your circumstances. So many people believe it's the other way around. So many people wait for circumstances to change so that their mindset changes. Well, when I'm out of this, when I'm out of this marriage or, you know, when my husband or or wife starts treating me a certain way, or when I start making more money, or once I finish school or once this or whatever, once this stops happening or starts happening, I will feel better. I won't have this mindset. I won't whatever. And here's the thing that's, that couldn't be further from the truth. Okay. Mindset precipitates actions or rather mindset precipitates outcomes. So whatever you are thinking, you are manifesting into reality. Okay. That has to do with business and life and relationships and everything. And that's why it is so crucial, but beyond any skill that I want you guys to work on, whether it's learning how to use Trello, learning how to close sales, learning how to do all that. Number one should be getting your mindset right to believe that you are capable and worthy of doing whatever it is you set out to do. And that a lot of the things that you think are deceptive and they are lies and they are not true. And it is up to you to daily combat those. Okay. It's not like you say it once and all of a sudden you're like, great. I just, my mindset has changed. No, it's an every single day effort. It almost reminds me of sobriety. Okay. Sobriety for people who are drug or alcohol addicts or recovering, it is an every single day choice. Sometimes it is a minute by minute choice to choose sobriety. Okay. So whether they are four days sober or 40 years sober. Okay. Having done lots of AA counseling, a lot of them say that they have to wake up and choose sobriety every single day. Okay. And that's what you're going to have to do. You have to wake up and choose a positive mindset every single day. You have to wake up and choose a success mindset every single day. You have to wake up and believe you are worthy and capable and knowledgeable and all those things. Okay. That's what we talk a lot about affirmations. I know in the beginning, I was like, not in the beginning of this, but before I really knew about mindset and stuff, I was like, that's so stupid. You know, I am worthy. No, like I used to be that person that was like, that's so dumb. So I totally get if you're a person that's like, that's cute, but they work. Okay. Even if you are in the midst of, I find myself ever since being a a clinician and helping other people through crises and having those mantras of like, I'm okay. I'm safe. Everything is all right. I am in control. But you can say that I found myself saying those things and I'm like, oh my gosh, those are affirmations, right? Saying them makes them real. And again, it's because you underestimate the power of your brain. You underestimate the power of your thoughts and people who underestimate the power of their thoughts believe that their thoughts are worthless because intrinsically they believe they are. And so first and foremost, I really want you guys to work on mindset because I feel like once you find what works for you and once you really truly learn that you can control it and you can fix it, you can perfect it. And by, when I say perfect it, it's not like you reach a pinnacle and like you, it's an evolution. Okay. You're on a constant journey to perfect it. You'll never get there. Okay. That's the whole point, but you're on a constant journey to perfect it. They call that self-actualization. Okay. Um, and so I definitely feel like when we get this, everything else falls into place because you feel more capable of learning the skills we teach. You feel more capable of finding the resources by yourself. You feel more, more ready to take on big things and do scary stuff because your mindset is different. Okay. 
And so I encourage you guys to write yourself some affirmations, write yourself some mantras. We are actually going to do some um, like, like skill practicing things that I think are going to be really cool um, that actually literally walk us through fixing our negative thought distortions um, going through and actually doing some of those things and rewording them and rewiring our brains together. Um, Krista, you want to say anything, add anything, wrap anything up, add your two cents. I added in the chat, um, mindset, you pretty much said it. Mindset is tells us how to do things. And then what we do is our outcome. Um, so it's always a line. Um, and if something in that line is messed up, that outcome like she said, if you're thinking negative, if you're always thinking about the worst thing that could possibly happen, that's always the thing that is the least likely thing to happen. But if you, if that's all you're manifesting, that's all you're going to get. And then I added in there, I heard it over and over and over before, and it never really clicked. And then this morning I was preparing for this and I was listening to Trent Shelton on the way to work. And he said, mindsets are contagious. If you're hanging around people that are negative, guess what? You're going to catch that negative attitude. But with on that flip side, whatever you, your mindset, you're going to spread that to other people. So just because you're in a bad situation, don't let that spread to other people because just like the pandemic we're in, it's just going to spread. So make sure we keep that to ourselves. Sometimes you may need a, someone to lean on, but don't infiltrate the whole camp with it. Um, make sure you're working on yours so that we can all work on it together. Yeah. In the same sense too, where it's, if you feel like your mindset is toxic to yourself, it's probably toxic to others, but also understanding that our brains seek comfort. They seek homeostasis. Okay. They don't want to change. It doesn't want to, it wants to stay the same. Okay. So you were going to have to force this. And so why, why do you, and why when we're sad, do we want to listen to sad songs? Why? It does not make us feel better, right? I mean, it does, but it doesn't. It makes you feel comfort, but it doesn't help you. You're wallowing, <laughs> you know? So it makes you feel better, but not better, okay? Why do you, when you are having this toxic mindset, do you seek out other people who also have that similar mindset? To you, it's like they get me. They understand me. They know where I'm coming from. It's comfortable. It makes you feel better, but it's not doing better for you. It's not making you better. It's giving those thoughts permission to continue living. Okay. Um, it's like, you know, when, when you're, when you're sick and then you just go sit in the sick bay with all these other people who are coughing all over you and leaving their germs everywhere. What's the hope of you are ever going to feel better? <laughs> right? You guys are all just going to keep giving each other the germs, the toxicity. Okay. So it is up to you to remove yourself and to not, to do the uncomfortable thing of not surrounding yourself with people who, who get it with people who are feeling what you're feeling. I encourage you to find someone who has felt what you felt and overcome it. Or is, or is finding what they've found something that works for them and they are choosing something different every single day, okay? So doing the things that, are, that don't feel comfortable, but that are better for you, okay? Again, like when you're sad, don't listen to sad songs. Listen to something else because you'll find that it actually changes how you feel. It actually, it like, like Chris has said, or like, like Chris has said that Trent said, <laughs> is that it's contagious and you have to, sometimes it feels forced at first. I know a lot of times people, because we push positive mindset here, it gets perceived as fake. And that's not, that couldn't be further from the truth. It's not a necessarily a fake it till you make it, but sometimes you do have to fake the funk for the funk to become real. Okay. You do have to say, I'm happy. I deserve to be happy. I choose joy. You don't have to lie to yourself and say, oh yeah, I'm full of happiness when you're clearly not. But you can say, I'm choosing joy. I'm choosing peace. And you can choose something different. And you'll watch, you'll start to do things that are peaceful, that are joyful, that are happy, that are fulfilling. And then you start feeling that way. 
and then you start acting differently. And then certain things start happening. You're more, you're happier in your relationship, when your marriage and with your kids, you're, you're happier in your job. You're more confident. So you're getting, you're making better posts. Those posts are getting more interest, that more interest because you're, you're confident is the way you, you private message them. You're closing more sales. It's, it's a snowball effect. It's not like you're going to wake up tomorrow and go, I'm worthy. And then you're going to get five people who are like, oh my God, tell me about this live stuff. Like, that's not how it's going to work, but it is a snowball effect. Okay. So I highly encourage you guys to really make this something that you emphasize every single day, something that you choose, something that you wake up. I don't, I don't know if you journal, I don't know if you have a whiteboard or have something that you look at that has something that fuels your mindset. Some people choose journaling, some choose devotional, some listen to, I love podcasts that fuels my mindset. And I know that when I'm less productive, my mindset isn't right. And when I do that, I can look back and go, I'm not reading as many books as I used to. I'm not listening to as many podcasts as I was. I'm filling my brain with Netflix junk and news and this crap, right? Like the Facebook, everyone saying crap, right? Like in it, it is, it, it's toxic. It is actually probably a worse pandemic than the coronavirus is negativity. If anything, that's exactly the pandemic that hit us in 2020 <laughs> is negativity. Okay. So I feel like if that we are going to, <laughs> the vaccine for that is fixing our mindset. Okay. The Pfizer ain't going to release that you are, but <laughs> That's what we are going to work on, um, I think, in this year. And once you fully, truly embrace it and you understand its importance and you give it the attention it deserves, you will start to see a big shift in your business. So unless you have something extra to add, Krista, um, we can go ahead and wrap that up for people. If you are curious and you want those um, graphics that Krista and I were going off from, let me know and I can put them in the chats for you guys, if you, I don't know, some people like to print that stuff off. They like to look at it, like to redraw it, put it in their journal or whatever. Um, I can go ahead and put it, I will put it in Thrive Army and I will put it in the Thrive Army leaders and then they can go disseminate that outward to their team. So, all right, y'all, I love you so much. Big, big things happening this year. I feel it. Um, and we pretty much have Zooms every single day. I'm, we have Zooms every single day. <laughs> so there is umpteen opportunities for you to receive training, for you to fix your mindset. Even if you feel like you don't benefit from the knowledge, you will benefit from being around other like-minded people. I guarantee that. Okay. So I love you guys so much. I will catch you later. Bye.